Malcolm, how are you? I'm very well, thanks Kayla. Good to see you today. <laughs> uh, we've just got a few questions for you. Uh, the first one is, why are we having a year of faith? The year of faith has been called by our Holy Father, Pope Benedict, to help us uh, deepen our faith, but also to enable us to spread it uh, around the world a bit more. There's no point in having this precious gift if we keep it to ourselves. So he wants us to think about faith as something that we receive, but also as something that we give to others. Brilliant. What is faith and what are its characteristics? Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> When I went to school, we had a, a thing called the Catechism, which uh, is a little red book um, with a couple of hundred or more questions in, and we used to learn these off by heart, um, just like children at school learn their times tables. We learn these uh, questions and answers about our faith. And the one for faith itself, the question was, was what is faith? And the answer, which I still remember, is that faith is a supernatural gift from God which enables us to believe without doubting whatever God has revealed. How about that? It's not bad for Thank you. an old man remembering, uh, <laughs> remembering something from uh, nearly well, over 50 years ago. But you see, the important thing about that is that um, faith is a gift. It's a supernatural gift. Now, we have other virtues, other gifts, but we do have to acquire them, like courage or prudence. They're the traditional ones, you know. Uh, there were four of those. But there were three theological gifts. Faith, hope and charity. And they're something which comes to us from God. And although we have to acquire them, we do it by accepting them. And then letting them grow within us. What they enable us to do then, having made that choice, that free choice to accept faith in our lives, we then let it grow within us. And it enables us to believe whatever God has revealed. So that's all that God has revealed, not just the things we like and the things we don't like. And not the things we don't like. Brilliant. Following on from that, how has God revealed himself to us and how does he continue to do this? Well, in the scriptures, of course, God revealed himself in many ways, um, and that helps us understand the way in which God reveals himself to us now. First of all, he spoke to the patriarchs face to face, well, at least voice to voice, they seeing the face of God is what we're aiming to do, of course, with our lives. But that soon changed into a relationship through the prophets, where the prophets spoke of God to the people. And then, of course, perhaps slightly more poetically and mysteriously, God spoke to us and still speaks to us in Scripture through the wisdom literature, through the poetry of the Psalms, through the history of the peoples as well. And that takes us uh, to a new level of understanding because there we have to, we have to pause and we have to think we have to allow God to emerge from the page. Though, of course, when we talk about the Word becoming flesh, we're already well on the way to it by understanding how God reveals himself in the words of Scripture. So, the Word made flesh reveals himself now to us in the Blessed Eucharist, still, of course, in the Gospels, in the words which we now called scripture, and in each other, in the community gathered to worship, there we also we can find God revealed to us. Brilliant. Um, how was your faith handed on to you? Oh, well, I think it was by a process of osmosis, really. <laughs> kind of a drip, drip, drip. Uh, it wasn't, I didn't have a, a moment of revelation as such, but I was brought up as a Catholic in a rather traditional family. We weren't over-religious, but we were religious enough, you know. We taught to say our prayers. We, my brothers and I were altar servers at the local church. And uh, one of the big influences in my life was my grandmother, who uh, was a very prayerful woman. And even when she became very old and infirm, she would still kneel down uh, every day and say all her prayers, even if she couldn't get to daily mass. 
uh, she was a great example to me. And then, of course, with Catholic schools, we deepened our faith with wonderful examples of Catholic teachers. Then, as I grew up and went through university, I became very interested in, in the uh, social gospel, the social justice teaching in, of the church. And I suppose that's, it was that element of reaching out to people who are uh, less well off than we are, trying to see how the, the good news really is preached to the poor, um, and the difference it makes and the demands it places on us, the responsibilities that we, we have as a result of that. That's really what kept me going through the, as a Catholic, through, the, through my youth, uh, my young adulthood, shall we say. Brilliant, thank you. How have you tried to hand on the faith in your time as Bishop of Nottingham? Ah, well, that's more of, a, more of an institutional task. I, I do it uh, principally by supporting the parishes and the schools in our diocese and seeing that they are uh, well staffed and that they, as best as I can, uh, using what influence I have, and uh, that they are uh, teaching the Catholic faith through liturgy and through lessons and through formation for the sacraments and through all the other means that we carry on our faith. So that's kind of an institutional way of doing it. Um, but I'm quite aware that actually faith is something which is caught rather than taught. And um, you know, just as I caught it from my mother and father and my grandmother, um, other people catch faith from other people. And uh, particularly young people, I think, are more likely to catch it from uh, one of their friends. They're likely to be deepened in their faith, at least through the experience of friendship um, and through someone they know and admire who is a devout Christian than they are just by reading a book. But it can work always in many different ways. Brilliant. As a diocese, how are we responding to the Year of Faith? Well, we're doing all the right things. We're having the, the, big, the liturgies uh, to open and to close the year of faith. And we will have uh, the special uh, events throughout the year. In particular, I want people to value what they already have. Um, so we are going to use uh, Mary, woman of faith, as our particular, uh, our particular icon, our image for disciples of Christ, people who believe and have faith in him just like she did and that will be a focus in all of our churches and at the liturgy. I also want people to realise that the prayers which they say are very deep and meaningful and um, are, are, have a special place in our Christian life, particularly the Our Father which, which is the prayer which Jesus gave his disciples, his friends, his followers, so people will be given the Our Father again. And you might say, well, what's the point of that? We all know off by heart. But if we have it on a special card and it's handed to us in a special way, then I hope we will be able to, to meditate on the words and see how they really impinge on our daily lives. Later in the year we will be handing out another card with the creed on it, the statement of our belief, um, and once again, we want this to be something which people can treasure, so it's not just words they know off by heart, something which they keep uh, kind of in their mind without thinking about it, but because those words are on a card, it will enable them to focus on what they do actually believe. So that's the kind of liturgical side of it, but also we are continuing with our uh, catechist formation program with the Bishop's Certificate. So that last year we had a pilot scheme which was very successful and we're now launching that across the diocese so that uh, people who pass on the faith through sacramental preparation will be able to deepen their faith, more of a, uh, be able to deepen their faith so that they can, um, they can understand it better and therefore pass it on to others in a clearer way. And we're also looking at our justice and peace work and we will be 
uh, through our Justice and Peace Office, helping our parishes and others come to a deeper understanding and knowledge of the Church's social teaching as well. So that's just for starters. There'll be lots of activities within our schools, culminating in a special pilgrimage to Walsingham for, for all our schools next June. And um, there will be lots of, uh, lots of things going on with our youth service and uh, throughout all areas of the diocese. Thank you very much.